manager coming in, Asaf Mwebaze, they, they do not seem like they were last season. So you get a feeling that maybe this is the kind of uh, season where they can um, build on the kind of results that they have registered thus far and um, make it quite difficult for this URA side. Actually, come to think about it, the last time that Bright Stars was able to beat URA, and that time it was at their home playground in 2018-2017 season. Bright Stars winning that game by a solitary goal to nil. You might have to ask John Vianney Simbe to dig deeper into his catalogue of results and check the archives. For the last time, Bright Stars beat URA away from home. It's a tall order for Asaf Mwebaze and his judges. Yeah, definitely it is. But I think that the confidence that Bright Stars come with is uh, owed to the fact that uh, URA have not looked in any way indefatigable this season either. If you look really? at how they are on as we watch the game get started. Well, game is underway and we're coming to you live at the Nachisunga Saza Grounds here in Mukono. Can okay, you come up with square pass? through the center of the park. One, two, nice distribution here, allowing Patrick Mbawa! It's the upright! Almost stunning! The Bright Stars team to Silas are right there. Some instructions coming in from Andrew Chambade, urging the team to come down and mark their positions. But in an instance of a near impossibility, Mbawa picked his spot and delivered a real cracker there. Just a few inches lower, and it would have had Hassan Matovu picking that from the back of his goal. The thing is that uh, there's a bit of laxity there coming in from Bright, Bright Stars. Bright because, well, the person they were marking neutralized that midfielder has Saidi Cheyune, Vianney Sekajugo, and leaving Kabon. The players just not getting their mojo on yet, but somehow you just don't think that um, Bright Stars are doing enough. Well, a breakaway here and a chance that they've been waiting for, and a step and a save here of the highest calibre. And in that instance, a bit of criticism coming towards George Senkawa from Ibrahim Dada, pointing out that he did not need to make those two touches to stop the ball. But right there, once again, exposed totally and leaving Kabon unselfishly setting up the ball. That touch, the second one, gave Brightsters just the moment they needed for their goalkeeper Hassan Matovu to get in place and put a perfect stop to that. Yeah. The build up here, URA patiently going about their business and uh, popping more and more numbers into the box area. Now the delivery and the header. And once again, a sweeping, fleeting glance. Manages to push the ball away. Hassan Matovu is definitely thinking this might be the season for the goalkeepers. Yesterday, one intriguing one taking the man of the match performance. And if this game, for any reason, were to stop now, who would be a better befitting candidate than Hassan Matovu? Snatching that right from the jaws of a goal. The delivery does not even give them a whiff of a chance at goal. And here comes a bigger than a whiff there. Hard shot. And in that moment, Living Kabon was appealing for a handball in the box area. It looks like Bule Warren effectively got in the path of the trajectory of that ball and just stopped it dead in its tracks. Um... Well, had his hands down. Yeah, he's exactly. thinking about is um, taking him off because he's causing them a bit of problem. Chance again, powerful header. Goalkeeper clears his line, and now once again, they get back in. Marker to a second one. Yasin Mugume getting the ball in, trying to cut in and opening up space on the wing here for Bunjo. Bunjo now dragging himself into the 18-yard box here, and that's a powerful clearance there from the king of the air, as is affectionately known to the URA faithfuls, Benjamin Yakojo. Right instance for a powerful header, probably the biggest attack that Bright Stars have been able to master up here. Any other day, that could have probably counted, but not on Benjamin Yakojo's watch. Yeah, that was a very good opportunity created by Bunjo. Just look at how he beats his man, and then sets up, and I just, I just don't understand what Insano goes is doing In a way, there. real clats of defending here. Nice layback, back, beautiful back heel, and a shot! Delivery from Living, and a powerful header, and again, same result! The goalkeeper is allowed to unleash his cracker. Goes in and right on cue. And it ultimately results in dividends. It was the last card they had left to play. Unleash that thunderbolt. Finally get the goalkeeper into a situation where you have to choose between a rock and a hard place. And the best he could do is punch it away. The follow-up effective. Learning into the back of the net. It's one of those situations you can only say, hard luck, Hassan Matovu. 
But that was an ultimate plan orchestrated here by the team. Calling for the offside. Might need to get a bit of a replay there, but ultimately eventually pushed in there by James Begisa, who gets himself onto the score sheet. What else? The final card they had to play in their arsenal plays right for them. What a scorcher that was. Support of Nelson Senka. Absolutely. That's been a big problem that they don't come in numbers to try and put a bit of pressure on you. And that's what been one of the biggest undoings. Chance comes up here. Heavy shot and a bounce in. Second bite of the cherry. And once again, similar shades of what was in the first half. The goalkeeper does his beat. The second ball, he's left all alone and totally defenseless. And he was running here by George Senkaba, who in that moment just seems to appreciate. Last season, this game ended 3 0 in favor of URA. This season, there might be just a spell away well, from things that uh, happen again. The thing is that uh, that was not good goalkeeping. I mean, in any way you look at it, I think that Hassan Matovi should have done better. You don't punch the ball back straight to the four that is on running towards your goal. You punch it on the far side or you punch it outside into the corner. And if you look at even the first goal that he considered at the tail end of the first half, that free kick shot, you thought that it was directly really putting in the shift. And that's the reason why there are two goals down. Well, here's someone who's putting in the shift. Penez, James Begisa tries to lay the ball into the path. And you are here willing to chase down even the biggest red herring that they will not probably catch up with. But that's the spirit and the zeal they're willing to display here. Goal scorer James Begisa Penez. Penze there trying to set the ball in for an on rushing Dada. Just clearly, they didn't seem to have. Just look at that. And another shot left to go. Should have been an easy tap in here. Now can he pick the lock that the URA defense is mounting here? Yes, he does. And a chance comes up. Whistles away, and it's skied up here. They battled for a chance. They created, but once again, Yasin Mukume's foot has failed the team. Well, the thing is that one of those rare attacks and it's coming from the left side and good play there coming in from um, Nudin Bujo to find um, Kaka and Omoy and Kaka just squares the ball very well placed and you feel that uh, with good execution they are coming in from Mugume. And, that and the game does continue and once again gets back to his backtracking and sliding in. And there's a chance here. Loki releases the ball. Equalizer. It will stand. The referee points to the center. It will stand. And it was the god of mischief. Loki steps in, causes confusion, causes panic, causes dissent, soils the sheets, and allows Nelson Nelly Senkatuka to level the tie. Or at least pull back one. Not level the tie, but pull back one in here. Split second moment. Good snapshot. Senkatuka for a moment had almost had the chance to elude him. But Fett was on his side. 2-1 it is. So Tilo score. Well, I'll tell you it's game on. But like I said earlier on, that... Um, the deficit cut down. And the advantage hangs by a thread as they try to cross the ball in. And careless defending. What was, Bu what was Warren Bulle looking at there? In a moment, throwing his goalkeeper literally to the wolves. And saying Kava was ready to devour him alive. Might have saved it, but it comes at a bit of a physical expense. Just look at that. That was very poor. What, what are you doing there, Warren Bulle? Clearly not concentrating, and it seems to suggest that he was leaving the ball for his goalkeeper. But you don't do that. That's very poor defending by uh, Warren Bulle. And now once again, mounting another attack. Cross, weaved in, far post, nodded back. Oh my goodness, hits the woodwork. Santa Maria, that was for the highlight reel. Nelson Senkatuka at his potent best so far in this game and still the goal eludes him. Well, the thing is that uh, that incessant attacking that is coming in from uh, rather bright stars and uh, almost uh, paid dividends for them. That was good play, but Nelson Senkatuka, no, that was good What's defending actually, Yagojo, Benjamin Yakojo. That should yes, have... Nelson Senkatuka, he now fits the ball here to Kaka. Kaka Omon flits it in, not in Bunjo. Can he lay it back here? Decides to go for glory. Nelson wanted the ball. Nelson was in the right place. Not in Bunjo. A rush of blood to his head. That makes him put that ball outside. But Nafian Alionzi now laying the law into his defense. They opened up way too much. They marked way too poorly and created a situation he clearly feels he was uncomfortable with. And a 
chance coming up here for Sega to cash squares the ball. And the Lord of Mischief cannot pay dividends, but the danger is not yet done. A quick cut back, intercepted by Najib Fesali. Frantic, frenetic action right here at the very death as a long ball is played in and the counter attack is on from one way to the other, from attack to defense. And now they have to fall back in. For the moment, Dada shackled there. He just could not get his chance. But what an opportunity it was for the Lord of Mischief to make a name for himself here. That would have been the consummate performance from Loki if he had just been able to pop that in. Yeah, definitely. That was a very good opportunity. Guilt edge opportunity, you could call it, for Bright Stars. One, to get them back into this game to level the tie. A good opening, good play coming in from Nelson Senka. You could see the idea was smart as he ran on. And Fesali again losing his concentration and then he beats his money and Nelson sets it up and there are no bodies because when you're going to attack you need to have bodies in that penalty and then this square ball not good enough clearly shot 28 that was not right left, Najib Fesali clips the ball back opportunity for a good cross and Loki the lord of mischief the lord of mischief wrecks his havoc equalizer wow. for Saul Tiller Bright Stars it was set in the stars. There would be just one man that is capable of causing that much havoc in one game. Ladies and gentlemen, there you are. Peter Loki, the Lord of Mischief, has landed. Well, the thing is that just look at how high he jumped there and the way he directed the ball far away from uh, the goalkeeper. But the delivery there coming in uh, from Odong, just look at that. And then he beats... Benjamin Yakojo, as the ball was dropping in, that was superb display coming in up from Loki. But the cross, brilliant. The execution. Get out to the wing. Here comes Chitimbo. Innocent crossed in. <laughs> My word. Bring this one to a close. A match that probably has a script that would best be written by Charles Dickens. The tale of two halves. James Megisa Penza getting onto the score sheet there. And of course, George Senkaba doubling the tally for URA before Nelson Senkatuka stepped up and gave hope to this team. And then all was set for the God of Mischief. Loki stepping in, wrecking havoc, and more importantly, leveling the tie to earn that one precious point for this particular team, Bright Stars. It's the fifth draw in a row, but probably one that they will feel might be the most important draw since that opening day when they took on Vipers Sports Club. For the Newtos, a game worthy and totally fully that deserving of such an entertaining evening. Full time it is at the Saza Nachisunga grounds. URAFC 2, Saltillo Bright Stars 2.